Hey, this is Ellie from the Maxon Training Team. And in this Redshift quick tip, I'm gonna show you how you can create colorful smoke with Pyro and Redshift. For this, I've already got a scene set up with my Pyro smoke cloud. The important thing here is I'm only using the density channel, which creates that smoke effect. I've also set the current state to object, which has given me this density VDB. On a side note, if you wanna learn more about these settings, check out Jonas Pill's Pyro quick tip, which I'll link in the description below. There are a few different methods you can use to color pyro or VDB smoke in Redshift. For this quick tip, we'll be using the density channel combined with the pyro volume material. Let's get started. First, create a new pyro volume material and add it to your pyro object or density VDB. Select the material and then the pyro volume node to show its attributes. Here you have three main areas, scatter, absorption and emission. We're not working with temperature, so we can hide emission. For this setup, you're gonna be focusing on these first two. Scatter is controlled by the density channel and relates to the light hitting and scattering inside the volume. The higher the value, the more scattering, and therefore the brighter the volume, and vice versa. Absorption is being controlled by the same density channel and controls how much light is being absorbed. The higher the value, the more light is absorbed, and so the volume looks more dense. The lower the value, the more light is being allowed to pass through it. We can also use the gradient ramp to remap these channels. Low values are the left side and high values are the right side. So you can pull in these knots to clamp the scattering and absorption values to change the look. But you're here to learn how to color this smoke, right? For a quick overall color of the volume, you can use the scatter tint setting here. But for more interesting artistic looks, you can use the scatter ramp gradient to color remap the density values. Add some extra knots and choose your colors. Make sure to keep the furthest left knot, which is the lowest value, at 100% black to avoid any clamping issues. Also keep in mind brighter colors will result in more scattering and brighter areas and darker colors will result in less scattering. You can even combine this color gradient with the tint setting. To take this a step further, you can also control the absorption color here, meaning the light that's being absorbed will be tinted by this color. Again, the same rules apply. Darker colors will have less light absorption, therefore a brighter volume, and lighter will mean more absorption. A final step for coloring your pyro smoke is to also use area lights because the light in the scene is being scattered and absorbed by the volume, these area lights will also affect the colors you see. Enjoy playing with colorful smoke. If you like this quick tip, please like and subscribe.